All right, another JoJo video that I am late on making. And um, if y'all like this format without the uh, webcam, let me know. Uh, webcam is pretty shitty, as I'm sure you've accustomed to. Maybe you watch the channel for a while, but just let me know how you feel about it. And let's go ahead and get this review out the way. Um, really, I think I like this chapter quite a bit. I liked it probably more than the past couple uh, felt more of a return to the action, high stakes that we've had in the past. Dangerous Pursuit Part 6, I thought this was going to end, this arc was going to end last episode. I don't think it's going to end next episode. Uh, so, <laughs> Dangerous Pursuit Part 6, Dangerous Pursuit might be one of the longest arcs in, uh, JoJo history. It is certainly the longest arc of this series. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get it moving. So, uh, starting off from where we left last time, we have Sarugi. Looking at uh, Jobin, wondering that we need to flush Yasuho and essentially kill her. And maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but now we're here where we're at. So, about sunset, that's probably, you know, roughly a half a day before they can harvest the uh, the fruit. So, and acknowledging that, we're probably close to the chapter. Uh, I haven't pulled up, I'm not going to say it quite yet. The chapter where we saw Narasuke being presumably murdered by Sarugi. There's a theory about that that is based on this chapter that I won't, again, acknowledge quite yet, but essentially we're about to hit the return point to this whole flashback. And yeah, Nagashi Kata family, the lore about that from um, uh, Jobin. There's a person I compared Jobin to in a different series, but I don't remember who it was, but it's very similar individuals. Excuse me. So at this point we have Norisuke, uh, I guess, attempting to do the, uh, the transfer exchange that the Gachikazes have done for years. I believe it started with, um, was it, was it Johnny Joe Star who did it first? Or something like that? I don't, I don't remember, but it was a while back that they started. I believe it's Johnny Joe Star, though. So, no sacrifice. It sounds good, you know. And, um, Jobin apparently really trying to break it down as the Rugi, who still appears to be kind of shook about this whole thing, and I I didn't realize how limited a stand Paisley Park was until this moment. I think we all kind of figured that Paisley Park could do just about anything. It almost seemed like a retcon when she did drown in this previous chapter because she really was capable of transporting to so many different intervals and places, and unfortunately it appears that this is, um, she's just limited in electronic devices like this. And I still don't necessarily believe that she was this limited beforehand, but, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. We've only seen her in city settings, so I guess it makes sense that she, in a limited household with electricity turned off, was unable to move the way she was in the city uh, settings. So, yeah, I mean, we're... I feel like at this moment, we're kind of seeing the end of Yasuho. It's, I don't know who's deaf to compare this to, because I don't think we've ever seen... Like, one of the main protagonists get, like, such a prolonged death. If she does die, such a prolonged death like this. Because usually, okay, think, like, Diego Brando. Or think, I don't know, um, Kakyoin. Like, these guys, I, I didn't watch the manga for part, or read the manga for part three, so I don't necessarily know how long that was. But, like, these are, like... Quick death, like they, they're in action, they die, we get a little bit of, like, recourse after they, they pass, and that's it. We're seeing Yasuho slowly just chip away for two going on to three chapters, starting with the next chapter, and it's like, goodness gracious, this is horrible. I mean, she's like, you know, she's like one of the three, four biggest characters, uh, more, most important characters, I'd say, maybe, but one of the three or four uh, biggest characters in the entire series. And, I mean, yeah, she's crying her heart out. She really can't do anything about it. Her stand really just has no option. It's on his own, the stand can do anything. And, yeah, the Gashikata estate is unable to hear her. It appears that she is talking through Paisley Park. But uh, because of where they're at in the house, there's nothing that you really do. And, unfortunately, I realized at this point that Sarugi could hear what was being said by Yasuho. And he's hearing his big sis, like, break away like this. And she got on the camera. Um, 
Mitsuba, the return of Mitsuba, Mitsuba founder. Uh, Mitsuba kind of quickly realized that, you know, what is she doing? It's the camera outside the garage. We kind of keep it going here. And, you know, it kind of like, I don't, I think this might be a little bit of coincidence um, of, 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 you know, reaching this conclusion as, as Mitsuba did. But she did. She got here. Uh, KKK uh, hoodie. <laughs> Sarugi and Joven Higashikata. Joven, man, this dude is, this dude is menacing kanji to the T. And, yeah, Mitsuba could apparently, see, this is the thing, Mitsuba didn't even say anything. Like, so this, I guess I guess Yasuho could hear Mitsuba from all the way over there, but the door was closed, wasn't it? I don't know how she could hear her like that. But anyway, Yasuho <laughs> Yasuho thought she had a friend. <laughs> uh, we see the, the return of the water, the killer water, uh, which I didn't know that at the time. But the killer water has returned from, I believe, this is about three chapters. Ago when Sarui was still good, and then they had the kitchen scene. Um, I'm surprised Joby even allowed Mitsuba to get close to that toilet. Like, I know that there probably was no way she could actually touch and save that phone if she decided to do that. But Joby, <laughs> I'm surprised Joby even let her get close. All right, so she revealed the name of the uh, or the location of the the thing, the uh, the uh, Rokakaka fruit. <laughs> Joven, man, this dude doesn't even break stride with his facial expressions. Yasuho is dying, and like, Tsurugi has to, I mean, not Tsurugi, um, and Tsurugi has to, like sit there and like hear all of this. She has to like weigh these two things in her mind. Uh, I don't think Joven knew that she knew where the fruit was at, but she did. Now, here's an interesting point that I just came to. Um, now, Tsurugi now knows, I, I assume, about the Rokakaka. And, you know, of course, um, Misuba is pleading the case here. And Joe was like, nah, nah, bitch. <laughs> That's not happening. Get the fuck out of here right now. <laughs> oh, your ass. Your ass was grass. <laughs> so, yeah, we get to this point where Yasuho is pleading for the last time. And who else but the head doc? Look at, look, let, me, let me say this for a second. This guy's damn near omnipotent in this, in this manga. He just pops out whenever he needs to. And it is my intention, my opinion, that he somehow heard about the thing in the stag beetle room. He, I think, he saw this as an opportunity to take advantage of chaos in the uh, Higashikate estate. And they both, obviously both Mitsuba and uh, Yasuho have their own experiences with the uh, head doctor. But they both had their chances to uh, see him there. Jobin did not, and I, I, I'm i assuming that most of the knowledge that Suho had from his stand came the previous couple chapters when the uh, water, the steam kind of like pierced her hand, I believe it was, and I hope that is, we, I remember the picture of them two depicted, I'm assuming there might be a little bit of familiarity with, with, her, with his stand from her, and we have the uh, head doctor I assume looking at, he was looking at Mitsuba earlier, but I'm guessing he's looking at Yasuho now. I'm assuming he maybe overheard her say the location of the stag beetle. And yeah, so Joven finally broke stride. Uh, Mitsuba made the conscious decision to I'd attempt to flush, flush and murder um, Yasuho permanently. This would have this definitely killed her. So the head doctor looks at Yasuho with all of his um, <laughs> menacing kanji. Do, do, do. <laughs> so they got Kirk Lamar's song. Do, do, do. <laughs> and he crashes. He makes uh, Yasuho crash in a, in a different way. And he, he's made others crash. But we see um, pretty much what appears to be GG for Yasuho at this point. Her arm... Uh, snaps off and we see her fading into um into dust as we see many jojo protagonists fade away and yeah this is this is awful this is really awful at least we get a, another josuke moment before things go awry um very reminiscent of um 
Who's the short dude? Shigaraki. No, not Shigaraki. Uh, Shigechi. Shigaraki. Shigechi. Um, Shigechi from part four. This reminds me a lot of that. And the last word I think he said was uh was also Joe's cave. I'm correct. Uh, so so hey, it might be some situation. And at this moment, the head doctor chooses to hop off. I believe his attention. This is just my my uh, head cannon. I'm thinking his head, his intention was to get rid of Yasuho, who knew better than the other two, Mamazuku and Josuke, where the the fruit was at. That's my guess. I, I know he was he was here before, and he's been marking an estate for a while. He's pretty much assumed, and rightfully so, where the fruit is at in the household, or at least that is in the household. But um, yeah, I think he's pretty much marked his territory, and he got rid of one of the leading uh, competitors for the fruit in that moment so we now see the um the intention of of mitsuba right here she she pretty much lays out the stand in its entirety which for her to come to this conclusion just off of her seeing the head doctor earlier would seem a little bit coincidental uh, i'd kind of hope that she can do the stand to some degree beforehand because, you know, she kind of, I went to the hospital with Billy, blah, blah, blah. I don't think he's been falling and peeping at me or anything like that. Calamity. I think she kind of knows a lot about the head doctor more than anybody else we've seen to this point. And a great dialogue segue. So everyone's going to crash to his family. I will flush and drown the, flush drown, down the drain and out of here. Awakening three leaves, of course. And at pretty much the best moment. For both Yasuho, the narrative, and the premise that the head doctor really is coming here for the fruit and not just to murder Yasuho. The uh, killer water comes back in and we see the savior of Yasuho come through. The uh, the killer water, <laughs> I don't want to call it that, the killer water drips back onto her hand and at the perfect time. Uh, this stand has to be, I don't know, autonomous. It, we haven't even seen the stand, if I remember correctly, yet. And it just came through. It flipped Awakening Three Leaves the other way. Yasuo still appears to be dead, though. And it goes out here, crashes into, um, directly through the, the what will later be revealed to be the plant room. I believe you can kind of tell this moment because of Jobin's face. But yeah, it appears to be the plant room. Jobin is shook. Drips the water on the wall, of course. Um, the arm of Yasuo is pretty much it's gone. And it appears that the rest of Yasuo will soon be following suit. Uh, I don't know what this action means. Smolder. Okay, smolder. Like, okay, I know what the word smolder means. So she's kind of withering away, but... I assume that maybe it meant flushing down the drain, but she's for the most part pretty much gone at this point. I don't know what could possibly save her. I, my head cannon was that um, Joshu was going to hear and try to make some kind of, you know, action to save the girl. But at this point, she's pretty much unconscious, so she can't say anything. Even when the Higashi Kata family come to the room in this panel, she can't say anything anymore. So, I mean, they wouldn't even hear her anyway. But yeah, we have Norisuke finally uh, conscious of the almighty, the new and improved Rokakaka fruit. Uh, the first panel we see the new and improved Rokakaka fruit pretty much almost perfectly finished. And in this situation, we now parlay that into, shout out to the Jojo, the Jojolian Reddit, uh, where first and the biggest post I see on here is... This page, which leads to this page, where we see the corpse of Norisuke. And now we're left to wonder. So we have Paper Moon King. This is a little bit thicker. It means a lot more than it originally meant. It's kind of like a story in a story. So we have one dead person. We are only seeing this dead person's right arm, which if we go back here, uh, I may be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. So this, I believe, is Yasuho's right arm. Right, right arm is gone. Yasuho's right 
Okay, so you're facing down. That's her left arm is still on her. So she has a left arm going for her. And this is Norisuke's right arm that's being shown. So that's something to keep in mind. Norisuke's right arm. Oh, wait, hold up. That's a severed arm right there. Okay. That's interesting. So we have Norisuke's right arm that appears to be a, a stubble. Perhaps, perhaps it's here, here. There's two different theories that this could be. So that could be a stubble, and that could be a disconnected hand to the arm. And we see Norisuke, uh, Tsurugi's uh, regret on her face, right? And we see the same do to do to do kanji, but we've seen it several times before. So that's stump, disheveled arm, disheveled arm. And you go back here. We see a hand. We see the the pretty much the connector between the hand and the the, the stump, pretty much being removed right here. And we see Yasuho with a little bit of a stump left. This is this should be her right, right? Like I'm pretty sure this. I'm trying to face the way she's facing. That should be her right. So we have stump arm. I think my second theory was that um, Araki just wrote like the arms wrong. I just like forgot which arm was which here. But I'm going to make an assumption that perhaps. Perhaps this is Iraqi pretty much telling us back then, back in chapter 83, which is 11 chapters ago, about 11 months now, give or take, if not longer, that this is Yasuho that we're looking at right here. And Paper Moon King, as alluded to in this post, made Yasuho's corpse into Norisuke's. Now, as this says here, why disguise her as Norisuke? I guess this could parlay into this. Norisuke is obviously suspicious as hell. Maybe, maybe Norisuke, maybe Joba makes Norisuke disappear and it's played off to the rest of the family as if he died. That's my head cannon right now. Maybe he'll frame her slash Gappy for Norisuke's death. Turn the rest of Gashi Kata family against the game. There we go. Um, yeah. There we go. I think Jobin will. I think Jobin will do something with Norisuke. And then I think I don't think he could blame. I don't think he could bring himself to kill Norisuke. But I think he will impair Norisuke and then use Yasuo's corpse as Norisuke, and then he can spin the Gashi Kata family against. Josuke Higashikata. I guess at that point, <laughs> it's not Higashikata anymore. It's just Josuke Kira. And this will parlay to... At this very moment, uh, Josuke is sitting in the head doctor's lab for the um, the, the, mom, the the plant. And Mamazuku is, I think, still in prison or some shit like that. So the head doctor is presumably going back to the university. So in that time, I guess we'll see the death, in quotations, of Norisuke. So we might see Josuke versus the Doctor. And then we might see Josuke against Higashikata's. And then we might see <laughs> Josuke against the Doctors and against the Higashikata's. Uh, you know, some three-way, as he said. So yeah, this is, this is crazy. This is going to be a very... I think this is going to shape up to be... The most interesting um, who done it uh, type of moment in JoJo's history. Like we had that little part with Kira between um, the the, um, the electricity dude that was the first antagonist in the first half of Part Four, and then we got Kira, who's a sh you know shadow killer, and then that's about the only who done it we kind of had. I mean, we had. Some other moments are like, okay, well, we don't know the identity yet, but we're pretty sure that this is the main villain, this is the main antagonist, but we really don't know. We are at chapter 94, which I thought this would be done by chapter 95 to about 100, and it still could be done by chapter 100, but it'll take us a rush of plot quite a bit, so I don't think that'll actually happen. But um, we're at the point where we're in the end game, and we don't know who's the main villain. It 
could be Jobin. It could be the head doctor. It could be um, uh, Kato Higashikata. I mean, it could be a lot of different people. So we kind of have to have this moment of recourse and, and breathe for a second and just kind of, you know, don't don't project your own, like, I think it should be this dude because he makes the most sense or blah, blah, blah. Just, you know, enjoy it. Enjoy it. This might be the last part. Uh, it's 2020. Rocky's like 60. Um, this has been, what, a 10-year, a 10-year uh, almost ride. I don't think that. He might, Rocky might have one more in him, but it probably wouldn't be as a lead writer or anything like that. He'd probably like, need an editor or stuff like that to help him at this point. But, um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, JoJo heating back up. AOT on, on, uh, anime on break for a while. Uh, MHA is in the back half, supposedly the back ass of this art. So it's, it's JoJo season again, and, uh, hope we get part six animated.